Have you ever wondered why that photographer down at the camera club thinks they're really good, but they actually suck? And they can't even see it. They're so unaware of how generally terrible their work is that you start to wonder whether there's something amiss here. Now, I've made a video on this before called Why Bad Photographers Think They're Good, because I find it fascinating. Um, and it comes down to something called the Dunning-Kruger effect. And now with this video, we're going to go a little bit further into this because there's more to it than I initially thought. There's a second part. But first of all, let me crash course you on the Dunning-Kruger effect. I, myself, obviously fell victim to this. I thought I was the dog's bits when I started out in photography. I knew aperture. I could do off-camera flash. I could balance ambient light. I thought I was amazing. It's cringeworthy to think of how I behaved when I started out as a photographer. It, it makes me feel a little bit sick. But basically, the Dunning-Kruger effect shows that the less we know about a subject when we're starting out, the more we think we know because, and here's the key, we don't know what we don't know. And we also don't know that we don't know it yet. And it's a real common thing in photography. My word, is it a common thing. And all you have to do is to go down to a comment section in a video about tech and see people talking about certain things. And you go, you're saying that with such confidence, but you're completely wrong. And I get it as well. I see in the comments, I'm going, yes, but blah, 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 with some weird techie knowledge. I'm like, oh, maybe I don't know. What I'm, and I Google it. I'm like, no, they've just completely made that up because they think they know something, but they don't. And this is the Dunning-Kruger effect. It gets all of us. When I started my YouTube videos, I thought they were good. Go back to the old videos. Thankfully, you can no longer do the thing where you search oldest to newest because the old ones, God, oh, they're bad. Ooh, I should really take them down, but they still make money. So I'm quite mercenary and I probably won't. But th that's the Dunning-Kruger effect. Every walk of life, everything we do, even when like, and, and it happens repeatedly as well. This is what people don't realize. And it, this is not the main, what they don't realize. This is a, a tidbit you might have worked out that you need to know more, but each time you step along, you come into a new part of photography or you learn a new thing, it kind of micro happens. So I went into my bold and graphic style of work after like 10 years of working as a photographer with an agent, doing big campaigns, went in to do this, and I was like, oh, no loads. And it's only now I realize how little I know. So it's not just something which affects you when you're starting photography, it's every time you get somewhere new, there's like a new mini Dunning-Kruger waiting to shame you. But here's the extra bit in here, and this is where things get interesting. It's not only that people think they're better than they are because they don't know what they don't know. People don't know what's good. And, and here's why. The internet, brilliant thing, great thing, started with great intentions. Anybody can share information on the internet. Anybody can be popular on the internet. There is no correlation between likes, followers, and knowledge. There is nobody going, this information here is wrong. And I say this as someone putting content on the internet, and I'm sure there are many mistakes in my videos where I've said things that actually aren't correct. But the problem is, once one person says it and other people start mirroring it, it becomes fact. So you might see people saying, I'm a model photographer. Now, when I first heard people saying that, and this is me coming, and I, I always try and qualify this for people who are new to this channel. This is Tin House Studio. This is my education platform. This is what this is. I'm here to teach. We do one-to-ones, we do workshops online because it started during the pandemic. Over there, I'm Scott Shethunio. I'm a commercial photographer with an agent. I shoot ad campaigns. We go to the big agencies. We go to the big studios. We do the big jobs. I work in the industry. And I feel it's important for me to credit that before I give the information. Because otherwise, if you listen to this and you have no idea who I am, you really shouldn't take my word as gospel. Because without something to back it up with, I'm just somebody talking confidently with an expensive camera on a YouTube channel with a following. It, there's, there's no actual merit to what I'm saying. There's no proof that what I'm saying is right. And with that, weird genres of photography come along. Like I say, model photography. When I first heard that coming from that background, I assumed the guy was photographing models of cars and stuff. No, no, no. He thought he could make a living photographing women who want to be models. And sure, you can make some cash doing that, but that's not a genre of photography. There's no professional model photographers out there with agents shooting campaigns. There's fashion photographers, there's lifestyle photographers. You know, there's all these different types of photographers, but there's not a model photographer, I also find the word quite creepy. It's like, you actually just photograph girls who are attractive, you know, which is, you know, each to their own, but it's not a job. 
And then there's different things like I'm going to be a restaurant photographer. It's very hard in almost every city in the world to make a living just being a restaurant photographer. There are exceptions to this, absolutely. But the majority of places doesn't work. There's all of these career paths that the internet has told you exist in photography that don't. And on my one-to-ones, I get a lot of people come to me going, I'm doing this and it's just not working. And I'm like, yeah, that's not a job. Like just because someone on YouTube says you can be a model photographer doesn't mean you can. Like that is not a thing. And beyond that is not just the genre, it's the style. If you go and look for model photographers or whatever they are and look at the style of work they produce, it's like something out of the 1980s has gone wrong. It doesn't have any commercial viability. And I, I feel like I'm like ripping on guys who photograph girls on Instagram, and I am. But you need to be more than that. That is not a job. That is not a profession. That is not a career. That is not something which will get you money. And it's not your fault for doing that. It's not your fault for following that path because people have told you it is, but it isn't. And there's so much of this in photography. And the style in which you shoot has no commercial viability. It has no viability outside of the microclimate, which is model photography. And, and the same with so many different genres. They see someone on YouTube, like myself, doing a certain style, and they all go and copy it, but they don't realise that that person doesn't actually work as a photographer and doesn't make the money and doesn't live that life. And therefore, they're creating a portfolio of work that sells to nobody. It sells to photographers. Like, if I show you how to do a really technical shot, you'll all enjoy it because it's really cool. If I show you what actually gets me paid, I get no views. And I understand why people do these sorts of videos. It's like, if I show you how to do, like, most of my work, I use one light, bare bulb. That's it. Like, that's not exciting. You don't want to see me do that every week. But if I show you how to do a 57 light setup with all the expensive kit, you're kind of going to enjoy that a bit more because it's kind of fun and it's interesting. You see all the cool gear. I get it. I'm exactly the same. If I see a behind the scenes picture and it's got like 50 lights out there, I'm all about that. But that's not the reality of work. So there's this separate entity in here, which is that not only do people not know what they don't know, but it extends into what actually is good, what looks good, what is viable in a career path, what is viable within that career path as an aesthetic. There's so much in here which leads photographers down the wrong path. It ends up with them spending years and thousands of pounds chasing a dream that doesn't exist. And it is heartbreaking to see. And it is nobody's fault. It is just the way of the world. But I want you to wise up and sort of question. It's like if models have no money to pay for photo shoots, which most of them don't, most of them get free test shoots through their agency or through photographers they've made friends with over the years, how are you going to build a career charging them for that? And if local cafes, they're all independent, they're cash-strapped, how are you going to make a career shooting for them? Whatever it may be, you need to really look at, is there actually a job here? Or is it just something cool to do? And that is fine. If you want to photograph models for fun, free boots, absolutely fine. But if you think it's a career, you're being misled. So what do we do with this information? So what we know so far is, Lots of these careers that people tell us are here aren't. The style you're probably shooting in is just not viable or in trend whatsoever outside of the photography world. And we all think we're better than we are. It's a pretty tough place to be in. It's a pretty rock and a hard place situation, really. How do we get out of this? And it's not simple. There is no simple answer. But here's some tips. Here's some things you can do to help. First of all, head to the AOP website. Now, I must be completely honest here. I've been an AOP member for years. I am no longer a member of the AAP. For me personally, I didn't get any further benefit from it at the moment. I might change that, but for now, it's not something I'm going to do. But the AAP has a thing called Find an Agent. And if you go onto the Find an Agent and look at all the photography agents, these are the people who represent the photographers who make the good money. Not every agent's on there, a few agents left, a few agents joined, but it's a good cross-section. Go and see what their photographers are shooting and what it looks like and see whether that's a style you recognize. Because me personally, I learned on YouTube and the internet. My style of work was YouTube and the internet. It was not that. It took me a long time to realize I'd gone down a rabbit hole, getting very good at something which nobody wanted. Go and have a look at those agents. See what they're doing. See who they're doing it for and see what work is out there. Follow the photographers on the agent's books. Follow those people. Don't follow an internet photographer follow a real photographer. If you want your career to be in photography, if you're doing this just for fun, you just want to have a good time and you like the internet photography world, go for it. But don't fall down the trap that I did. Now, in terms of the Dunning-Kruger effect, you just got to suck it up. You've just got to sit there and go, six months time, I'm going to look back at myself and think, what an absolute idiot. 
which I'm sure I will have to make in this video. See you soon. Bye-bye.